Have you ever seen badges on a GitHub repo and wondered how they were created? Your first guess might be that they're developed using code or that it's some sort of setting on your GitHub repo. This is actually not the case though, and they're actually created using HTML or Markdown, which means that you can embed them almost anywhere you want, whether that's on your README or your Cordo website, for example. In this video, we'll learn how to create custom badges and how to embed them in various places. Now, the first step to understanding how to embed badges is understanding what badges actually are. Under the hood, they're actually just images. So for example, if I look at the raw version of this readme, I'll see that those three badges are embedded as images. When I click on the readme, and then I switch to the code view, I can see that these badges have been added in using Markdown. The key parts are the image link. This is known as the badge URL. And the second link is where the user will be taken if they click on the badge. Now for these particular badges, we can go to this website and we can see the examples of the badge URLs here. So if you wanted to use these CRAN badges, you would select one of these as the badge URL and then modify it according to your package. You can also add badges inside of a web page. And in fact, if we scroll down a little bit on the ggplot2 readme, we can see a lifecycle badge. And if I flip back to the readme and go to the code view again, I can see the link here. You'll notice this time that the badge URL is slightly different and it's coming from a website called shields.io. And in fact, this is a very popular website for creating customized badges. So we're gonna go to shields.io and then click on the badges page. From here, we can create tons of highly customized badges with whatever text we want or images or logos or colors. To use this tool, first we select the type of badge using the sidebar on the left. Static badges are the most simple, so we'll start there. Over on the right, we'll be able to generate the badge and see a preview of what it'll look like. I'm gonna click on show optional parameters so that I can control all of the options. In the middle part of the page, we have the documentation that explains how to change all of the different options. Let's try recreating this badge. It says label, message, and color separated by dashes. So to generate that, we would do any underscore text for the label, then we put a dash, and then for the message, we would type u underscore like, and then another dash, and then we specify the color, which in this case is blue. Now if I scroll down and click execute, I can see what the badge looks like. There are different style options that you can choose. For example, we just saw flat, this is what flat square would look like, like that. Here's the plastic style. Here's the for the badge style. And here's the social style. I'm going to change it back to flat. We can also add a logo on the left side of the badge. To do that, we need to pick an icon from simple icons. I'm gonna click on this hyperlink here to look at the options for the logos. For example, here's one for R, there's also one for Python, and for pretty much anything else you can think of. Here I type the name of the icon. For example, if I type Python, I now have the Python logo. Or if I type R, I now have the R logo. You can also change the color of the logo, and this accepts either hex codes, RGB, RGBA, HSL, HSLA and CSS named colors. For example, I can type green and this is what I get. There's a logo size option that we can set to auto if we want the logo to automatically resize itself. It's hard to tell, but the logo did get slightly bigger once I applied that option. According to the documentation, this is most useful for wider logos. I can also change the text on the left-hand side of the label. We already did that up here but if we wanted, we could use this option instead. For example, if I change this to say new text, this is what I get. I can change the color of the label, which is the background of the text on the left side. 
For example, if I type red, this is what I see. And similarly, you can change the background color of the right part. You can also add emojis in the text, which I think is kind of fun. For example, now I've set the label equal to the laptop emoji. And this is what I now get. And then at the very bottom, you can choose how you want to embed the badge. You can choose Markdown, HTML, or if the service that you're using just wants the badge URL, for example, this is the case for GitLab, then you can use the URL directly. If you want to use dynamic badges that depend on some value somewhere, then you can select one of the dynamic badge pages from the sidebar. Let's go to the dynamic JSON badge. Here it's expecting a URL to a JSON file and they provide us an example. So let's go to that URL. This is what that page looks like. So now if I wanted to be able to create a badge that contains any of the values that are found in this file, I can do that. So let's say I wanted to have the version number be displayed as part of the badge. Then what I would do is I would take the URL to the JSON document and put that in the URL field. And then under query, we would put the name of the key from the file that we want to use. So in my case, the name would be version. And when I click execute, this is what I see. You can show optional parameters. For example, we can add a prefix. So if I wanted to write version, and I can also add a suffix. For example, I can add an exclamation mark. And when I press execute, this is what I see. And then all of the other same options that we saw before are also here as well. Now you don't have to use a JSON file. You can use, for example, a YAML file, which if you're an R user will be pretty useful. Every Cordo project and package down project will have a YAML file. And there might be information from in there that you want to display as part of a badge. Additionally, anything that is using GitHub Actions would also have a YAML file. This one works exactly the same way as the JSON. It's just using a .yml file instead of .json. On the sidebar, there's also a ton of super fun pre-configured badges that you can add. For example, under build, you can show your GitHub Actions workflow status. So it'll show whether or not your pipeline is currently passing. For example, if I type tidyverse and then ggplot2, and then for workflow, I need to type the name of the .yml file that controls the pipeline, which is gonna be located under the .github folder under workflows. And let's say I wanna look at this one. I can paste that in and then click execute. And now it'll say that the build is passing. Again, we can use additional optional parameters if we want to override the default label. So for example, if I change it and then click execute, this is what I would now see. And then again, we have all of the same options as before. Under size, there are a few fun ones. For example, you can show the GitHub repo size. Again, I'll use tidyverse and ggplot2 as the example. I can see that the repo is 1.2 gigs. Under social, we can see the number of GitHub followers or stars or forks. Let's look at stars. Again, using the ggplot2 package as the example, the default style for this one is social, but you can always use the optional parameters to change it to something else if you want so that it looks something like that, for example. I can also look at the number of watchers or under activity, you can look at the number of contributors. For ggplot2, there are 319 contributors. Under version, there's a CRAN version option. For example, ggplot2 is version 3.5.1. Or if you want the GitHub version, there's an option that says GitHub R package version which in theory will probably be different than what is on CRAN. So here I can see that the GitHub version is 3.5.1.9000. You can also make completely custom ones by creating your own badge URL. 
because it's really just a markdown image under the hood, you could make an image that looks like a badge, which says anything you want on it, and then use the badge syntax to add it to your page. For example, the awesome Cordo repo has a badge, which is just an image. And if we look at the raw view of this readme, we can see the badge at the end here. And this is just an image. And if I go to that URL, I just see the picture there.